Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Good. All right. How many of you have ever been on a diet? That's it? <laughs> Just joking. Two or more? Do you ever wonder why you keep switching from one diet to the next? What if you could eat as much as you wanted without the worry of gaining weight? Great news. I have discovered and re-engineered this whole process for you, and you don't have to diet anymore. My name is Dr. Justina Sanders, and I'm a medical doctor, of course, as you know, and I have devoted my entire life to help people attain and maintain the best health possible. Um, I have studied for 17 years health, wellness, but unlike most doctors, nutrition. Fine-tuning everything I know about nutrition and lifestyle has led me to realize that much of what we think we know about diet and dieting as a society is immensely flawed. Each year, around 45 million Americans go on a diet. Despite that, 62% of American adults are overweight or obese. As a leading cause of death and disability, the obesity pandemic is literally weighing down the economy. By 2030, it's projected that 85% of American adults will be clinically obese or overweight. $72 billion later, we are spending more on diets and dieting, and yet, ironically, our waistlines are growing. So where's the appeal in dieting if it's producing such poor statistical outcomes? I mean, why would you ever want to die it? The word merely foreshadows failure. So why don't diets work? And therefore, why is the recidivism rate of weight loss so incredibly high? When it comes to weight loss, there seems to be only three options. Increasing your physical activity, starving yourself, or adopting a diet. Simply put, diets are nothing more than short-term solutions to long-term problems. Whether it's a mode of suppressing deep-rooted psychological turmoil, what I call food numbing, a coping mechanism or band-aid approach of eating your way through the pain that most often comes at a cost, the more obvious reason people obsess over the latest fad diet is directed at their physical appearance. A common misconception is the narrative that being skinny or muscular means you're healthy. As such is the Achilles heel in the conventional view of true health. However, your appearance does not represent your whole health status. Markers of health often overlooked in the diet and weight loss equation include visceral fat, atherosclerosis, gut microbiome dysbiosis, and chronic systemic inflammation. They increase the risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and other weight-related comorbidities, such as hypertension. Furthermore, the potential damaging effects of dying, I mean dieting, may result in food addiction or obsession with counting calories or macronutrients that often leads to an eating disorder or gaining back more weight than before. However, just a 1% decrease in BMI prevents more than 2 million cases of heart disease, 1.5 million cases of diabetes, and also 127,000 cases of cancer decreasing the risk of stroke, improving your blood pressure, and your overall metabolic function. So, how do you eat yourself healthy? Throughout my life, I have endured various health ailments, many of which were dismissed by doctors as being completely benign. In a craze of desperation, I like so many of you, started experimenting with various different diets. Who knew that you can survive on just maple syrup and lemon water for a week? Just saying, <laughs> I did that. While I was studying kinesiology, I actually adopted a diet that comprised of lean meats, eggs, low-fat dairy, vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. 
I exercised for two hours a day. On the outside, I was toned muscular, simply the pillar of health. However, in actuality, my health problems persisted. The numbers on the scale did keep rising, and that led to more yo-yo dieting. And with honestly no end in sight, I, like so many of you, learned how to just live with my symptoms. However, years later, after I graduated from medical school, I stumbled upon research in the medical literature, yes, in the medical literature, that made me question the very degree I worked my entire life to obtain. A degree that now distinguished me as a doctor, a leader in healthcare. And yet here was scientific proof that not only could you lose weight, but also prevent, treat, and potentially reverse chronic diseases using food. How, as leaders in healthcare, do we, as doctors, not learn this invaluable, life-saving, missing piece of the medical curriculum? Connecting the dots, I discovered the whole plant-based lifestyle. The only scientifically proven nutritional regimen that has ever been proven to reverse heart disease. Devoid of any animal products, one might think it's simply just vegan. But I like to call it unprocessed, or rather, beyond vegan. It lacks refined sugar, oil, fried, or processed foods, it's about eating and drinking the way nature intended. Rich in whole intact vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, legumes, whole grains. The difference here, though, in comparison to dieting, is that the weight loss is tied to total health. No portion control, no calorie counting, no carb counting. You can burn more calories in your sleep due to its proven effects on raising your resting metabolic rate. Yes, I am saying that you could lose weight while sleeping. Once I understood the data, I adopted this for myself. And within weeks, symptoms started to disappear. And after just one year, the majority of my medical problems completely reversed. For the first time in my life, I was able to keep the weight off while gaining true health. Rather than a diet, this was truly a sustainable lifestyle change. The key here that is that it's not simply about some weight loss with temporary health gains. No, it's about a way of eating whereby the weight comes off by supporting optimal health for the long run. It shouldn't be about diet and lifestyle, but rather diet as lifestyle. So, how do you implement such change into your life? Simply being told what to do or changing your external environment, it's not enough. What you need to do is change the environment within your mind and re-engineer your thinking to never diet again. Easy, right? Right. In order to do so, you need to go through a process whereby you move beyond discomfort and get comfortable in and with discomfort. Rather than pain or discomfort as a deterrent, you use it as a tool for change and habit formation. The key here is to use pain for you rather than against you. Okay, but how do you use your pain as a tool for change? First, you need to have a goal. Second, you need to know where you are currently. And third, you need to understand where you will be, so the outcome, if you continued on your current path. Think of this as the GPS navigation system for your mindset. So, you're overweight. Your goal is to lose weight and improve your quality of life. Perhaps your weight is making you feel depressed or insecure. Perhaps it's causing you to have a bad social life, a sex life. And what about your hypertension, high cholesterol, and your prediabetes that you have as a result? Or all the medications that you're on? The way to use your inner GPS to help you navigate a way out of your current state 
is through experiencing both directly or indirectly, such as through visualizing, the polar outcomes of your choices, as well as their respective pain. On one hand, visualize yourself pain-free, on zero medications, living life to the fullest, and confident. On the other, visualize yourself suffering in pain and dying prematurely from some weight-related disease. This process creates perspective. Allowing pain to teach rather than consume you creates a space for pain as the central driver for change. Whether low pain intensity, such as low self-esteem or exercising, to higher pain intensity, such as enduring a traumatic event or a loved one gets a terminal diagnosis. This process is exactly the same. However, the higher the pain, the more effective this process works as a motivator for change. There's a caveat, though. The pain of not even attempting to make a change and therefore not even giving yourself the chance to attain your goal needs to be higher than the pain of your current situation. Focusing on what the pain feels like can ultimately aid in driving that momentum necessary for transformation. The key ingredients to any recipe for change are knowledge is the gateway, your why is the fuel, and your pain is the tool, a culmination of factors working in cohesion to give you the ultimate desired result of habit formation. Looking back, feeling betrayed by my medical education, which perpetuated my thoughts of suicide, was excruciatingly painful. But the thought of not even sharing this information with you as a different kind of leader in healthcare, far outweighed the pain of my clinical depression. I learned to use my pain as a tool for change and my why to propel me forward. And what made the experience sustainable years later is that not only did I achieve my goal of helping others as a doctor, but my medical conditions reversed. And seven years later, my weight has stayed constant. I allowed my pain to push me. I used it rather than be used by it. And that is how I've been able to create and sustain my lifestyle habits. I speak and act from a place of pain. Life isn't easy, but pain has truly been my greatest teacher. If you want to change the trajectory of your life, perhaps it can be yours too. Thank you. Thank you.